Hello, welcome back to you to today's video. We're going to have a look at whether it's week to 10 days in today's video. Um, so we've still got this uncertainty going into the start of December. The GFS still seems to be running with the idea that it could turn significantly colder through the uh, first week of December. The um, GM has also come on board, but that's sort of a lesser uh, model, so we don't rate that one as highly. And the ECMWF uh, still isn't on board with this idea. So um, a lot of uncertainty remains for the first week of December, but it's not beyond the realm of the possibility that we might have quite a cold uh, opening to um, next month. And I'll show you the detail in a second. Before you get on with that, just say about the ads. This link to articles on all the pages. If you have a browser, which is and click through the link. You'll be helping us to pay for the website. Thanks so much for doing that. Uh, you've got increased shopping to do at Amazon between now and Christmas. All you need to do is click the green button that says Christmas Shop. It'll take you to our Christmas Shop page where you'll be greeted by some snowflakes so you'll know you're on the right page. And uh, from there, you just click through the Amazon banners. That's key to the door. There is a search widget, but probably the most easiest thing to do is to click through the Amazon banners. It takes you directly to Amazon. And then once you get there, uh, you'll be able to um, use their search uh, widget to, um, or their search box, to look for whatever item you want to buy. And uh, that's what you need to do. You just buy your items, your Christmas presents as normal, because you've gone from Gaz Rovers to Amazon. We get a revenue fee on the things that you're buying. And a big thank you to everybody for doing that. Of a huge success again uh, this year. So I say big thank you to everybody for doing their Christmas shopping at Amazon. And you still got plenty of time uh, to go. Of course, I think it's a month today, isn't it, Christmas Eve? Yeah, that's right. Uh, a month today should be Christmas Eve. So um, plenty of time to get those presents out to you. And talking of Christmas, of course, there's going to be the 12th Christmas update on the Christmas updates page this evening. That'll be around 7 o'clock. So, I'm uh, going to start off with 500 with our height anomaly flow charts for the next uh, week to 10 days. We've got the uh, ECWF here on the top. GFS is on the bottom. We'll have a look at that in a moment. 500 with about 8,000 feet. Is an area in the, in the atmosphere where high pressure and low pressure being moved around by the jet stream running above. Blue extrapolates low pressure and orange and red to high pressure. Now, you see what's going on with the ECWF. There's a deep trough here through Scandinavia and going into Eastern Europe. That's the cold air. Um, also got a trough uh, in the Atlantic. And then we've got this ridge across the UK and into uh, western and central parts of Europe as well. Now, this trough is interesting because it's trying to undercut uh, the blocking feature or the high pressure, which is uh, just here, of course. So we are trying to set up a southerly tracking jet stream, but it's just not uh, quite right. And what's actually happening is that the coldest of the air is associated with this trough in across Scandinavia and Eastern Europe. And we're just under this ridge, not particularly cold at all. It wouldn't take much of an adjustment. Essentially, all you've got to do is send that um, ridge a bit further to the northwest. So have it around here as opposed to having it here, um, and you get the ridge around here, you're going to back this trough to the west, and uh, you'll undercut the jet stream like that. So it doesn't take that much of an adjustment to get a cold pattern from where the ECMUF is, but it isn't quite right up to day 10. Of course, day 10 is going to be the 4th of uh, December, so into the first week of the month. Now, things are much closer to a cold uh, spell with the uh, GFS. So, as I say, that's the ECF. You have this is the GFS. And uh, the trough here is across Scandinavia and also backing into Western Europe as well. Uh, the ridge, I have to change the colour because the heights are so intense, is through the Atlantic and going up to Greenland. And that, of course, is sending... Uh, the jet stream to the south like that. So we are entrenching cold air into this trough of uh, low pressure. And uh, that really is close to bringing down some quite cold air from the north. Having a look at the GFS temperature and precipitation ensemble, we've still got lots of uncertainty for this first week of December. These are for the um, upper atmosphere, by the way, these temperatures. So the red line here is the 30-year temperature average in terms of the upper air temperatures. Um, and we're above average at the moment, although it is cold across Scotland. It's really cold last night with many places going down in Scotland. Minus 7, minus 8 degrees, perhaps even lower in the Highlands and in the Scottish Glen. So despite like the upper air temperature being above average, really cold down on the surface. Not so for the south, and the reason is that we've got an easterly wind that's bringing in a lot of clouds, just stirring up the atmosphere. 
even so, it is colder than uh, you would suspect, looking at uh, how mild the upper air temperatures are. Ah, oh, um, and I think over the weekend the trend actually will be to turn things increasingly frosty uh, by night anyway, even down into the south. Well, we get through to the early part of next week, and uh, we're a little bit below average then with the upper air temperatures. And then to the start of December, uh, which is just here, we find all of the scatter appearing. There is a cooling trend, I think, through the first week of December, but again, lots of um, scatter between the warmest and the coldest ensemble members. So these are the warmest ensemble members just here. These are the coldest uh, ensemble members just here. There's something like a 20 degree, maybe more, differential between the mildest and the coldest uh, members of the GFS ensemble. So it still remains very uncertain uh, period, But I do think for a few days during early December, say this is December just here, for a few days we are seeing definite indications of a cooling trend. Precipitation uh, shows we have got precipitation spikes coming back through that first week of December. So um, either rain or potentially snow is possible there uh, through the first week of December. And it will be determined by exactly what kind of air mass uh, we get. These are the temperature anomalies for the coming week, the 24th of November to 2nd of December, generally coming out a little bit colder than average. I think November is just going to turn out to be slightly colder than average for the central England region. Further north, it will be a substantially, and perhaps quite significantly, colder than average November for a uh, place like Scotland and uh, Northern Ireland. The um, precipitation normally looks like this from the 24th through to the uh, 2nd of December, more or less uh, drier than average across most parts of the country. So here we go with the generic charts. And now I'm going to show you both runs of the GFS. It's a good thing with the um, updated version of WetCentral.d. I haven't uh, said about this uh, recently, but the good thing about the updated version of WetCentral is that we can now see um, all charts uh, through the day. So the GFS runs four times a day, which is um, midnight, uh, six in the morning, uh, midday, and then uh, six in the evening. Now, what used to happen is that the new run would supersede the old run, if you like. So the charts, let's say from the midnight run, would disappear when uh, the six o'clock run came along. Now they're individually uh, selected. So uh, we can uh, compare sort of the, mid the midnight run and the six o'clock run. That's what we're going to do uh, for today uh, or for today's video. So this is how things were looking at 96 hours, which is Monday 28th of November from the midnight run. High pressure centred across the country. We go through to Tuesday, high pressure still in control. Then Wednesday, got a little bit of retrogression taking place there. That's where we're beginning to take the high pressure from east to west, as opposed to the normal zonal flow, which is west to east uh, like that. So a little bit of ret retrogression through the middle part of uh, next week. And then further retrogression on Thursday, 1st of December, where we take that high pressure out into the central Atlantic, push a cold front down across the UK. There's a cold front coming through just there. That's probably bringing a band of heavy rain. The high map winds are turning into the north. I'm going to get through to Friday 2nd of December. Going quite a long way out now, but uh, by the time we get through Saturday 3rd of December, we find we've got high pressure through the central Atlantic and going up to Greenland. And this trough is sinking southwards. Now, there's cold air coming around the northern and western edge of this trough just here. But, <coughs> excuse me, on the eastern side of the trough, we are actually bringing up some southerly winds. So it isn't a straightforward progression to cold weather on the midnight run of the GFS. But we finish up on day 10, which is 24th of December. Um... Again, trying to bring down that cold air uh, from the north. It's trying to entrench the cold air just here with the milder air being pushed towards central parts of Europe. Quite a complicated pattern, but it is shifting there towards a colder solution. Now, this is the 6 o'clock run of the GFS. This is just updated. And again, we have high pressure centred over top of the country on money. So no difference there. High pressure through the country beginning to push out towards the west on Tuesday. So that's in line with midnight run as well. There it is on Wednesday. Definite signs of retrogression taking place with the centre of high pressure through the Atlantic. So everything in agreement up to the middle part of next week. But then we go through to the um, last stage of next week. We get a change. What happens? High pressure again. It is going into the central Atlantic and pushing up towards Greenland. But this trough, instead of the trough 
which on the midnight run was going southwards in that sort of direction. On this run, it's going southwards into Scandinavia, which brings us much more of a direct northerly wind by Thursday the 1st of September. So it's still a cold front pushing southwards, but the air behind it is much colder. Again, a direct hit of northerlies. And then beyond that, in towards Friday 2nd, we're firmly into a cold uh, north northwesterly flow that takes us through into the first week of December. This is the uh, day 10 chart, the Saturday 4th of December, where we are clearly in a cold spell. We've got a blocking feature in the Atlantic, no pressure to the east. We bring winds down from the north, and there's the jet stream trying to undercut uh, from the south. I spoke about that on the high anomaly chart. I've just run on a little bit more. What happens is that low pressure runs in with that southerly tracking jet stream to the south of the country. That could be a snow event for some parts of the country there on the 5th, 6th of December. It's a long way out and it probably won't come off. But if it did come off like that, you've got the winds in from the northeast. That would be uh, enough to be producing snow, I think, across England and Wales. The GEM is on board with this change to cold weather as well. So there's high pressure through the country on Monday, go through to Tuesday and Wednesday. That high pressure gradually drifting out to the west. All in agreement there. Last stages of next week start to take that high pressure out into Central Atlantic. So by the time we go through to day 10, there we go, 24th of uh, December. We've got the blocking feature through the Atlantic heading up towards Greenland. Big trough of low pressure across Scandinavia and winds are in from the north. So GFS and GM both turning things cold through the first week of December. The flying ointment is the ECMPF this morning. That's not in agreement. So on Monday, again, the high pressure is across the country. Um, that could be quite cold by then, by the way. We could have widespread frost, I think, by the start of next week. Still there on Tuesday. And then we go through to Wednesday and Thursday. And instead of taking that high pressure that way into the Atlantic, we just keep the high pressure sticking around Western Europe, which uh, leaves us on the milder side of things with the trough going down into Scandinavia and eastern parts of Europe. We finish up on day 10 looking like this. So we've got low pressure out to the west through the Atlantic. High pressure is over across eastern Europe. And we're in quite a mild southerly, southeasterly type flow. So no cold weather through the first week of December with the ECMPF. But the GFS is clearly going for this. Although the ensembles do indicate that there's a lot of uncertainty about it. Um, and until we see the GFS ensembles really firming up, I think there has to be a lot of, um, uh, just a lot of health warning associated with this period through the first week of December. Clearly something is taking place. Models are picking up on something. But until we get more agreement to get the ECMWF going for it, and more agreement with the GFS ensembles, I think you need to keep your feet on the ground and expect um, that it won't come off. But the possibility is there that we might turn things significantly colder through the first week of December. If we don't pull this off through the first week of December, we probably won't have to wait all that much longer to get some cold weather. I think at some point through December, we are likely to have a significantly colder period. That's how I think this is going to go, even if the first attempt during that first week um, doesn't quite come off. So uh, just carry on watching this space. We'll keep you updated at Gazweathers on all the twists and turns. And of course, this evening, talking of twists and turns, we'll have the latest update for Christmas. The last one was very mild. Will this one be a cold one? Find out at seven o'clock. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.